Welcome to my sixth video of shooting rats out of the dairy in western Washington state using an air gun. This picture made me laugh. It reminded me of the arcade game where the gophers pop their heads up and you smack them down with a mallet. I don't use a mallet, but this video does show rats being shot and killed with an air gun. So if you are offended by these images, please leave now and find something else to watch. The gun that I use to shoot the rats is pictured here. It's a Benjamin Marauder Woods Walker 22 caliber pistol carbine combo made by Crossman. It's an excellent weapon of choice uh, for this application. It's essentially a pistol that comes with a pistol grips or with a shoulder stock. It has a small silencer built into the in front of the barrel, so it's it's very quiet. And as you can see, I have an infrared flashlight clipped on the air tube. It's an Evola T67 infrared LED light. It is adjustable in intensity on the switch and also by focusing the light with the knob behind the bell that you can see. It has a rat tail switch that I have Velcroed to the other side of the gun where I can turn it on or and leave it on or pulse it using the switch. The camcorder is a Sony HDR SR11 high definition camcorder that uses um, night shot capability which enables it to record infrared light. It all ha also has a, a viewfinder at the very back that I look through when I'm shooting, much like a rifle scope. The laser sight that's in front of the camcorder is the Vector Optics Viper Wolf has a green laser and an infrared laser, which of course the infrared laser is invisible to normal vision, but shows up with the camcorder just fine. I would prefer that the laser sight was directly over the bore, but in this case it's offset a small amount. But as you can see, the laser dot is very visible for what I'm doing using it here in the dairy. And once it's zeroed, it tends to stay zeroed quite well. It's easy on batteries. It's a good sight. As you can see, it's pretty wet around the dairy. Western Washington is known for its rainfall. We have a few dry months during the summer. Most of the time, it's uh, pretty goopy. Rad decided to try to hide in uh, some portable pin uh, panels that didn't hide in quite well enough. We use a Crossman 14.3 grain, usually the hollow point pellets. They're quite accurate in the uh, Woods Walker and at about 13 foot-pounds of energy average, they do a perfect job on these rats. They'll penetrate well enough and yet don't have ricochet issues that uh, could cause damage to the dairy equipment or more particularly the cows. This is looking back under a foundation of one of the barns. Uh, rats have burrowed underneath there extensively. It's amazing the amount of dirt they can move. They tend to come and check on their buddies when they get shot, which is kind of a nice thing to do, I suppose, but it makes them more vulnerable to me. This rat was hiding behind the leaves, but his eye is quite reflective. I saw it through there and made a successful shot. A lot of European blackberries, they like to use uh, them for cover, nest up back underneath them. 
harder for the predators to get to them, usually. Here's our little hit him on the head with a mallet guy. Now turn your volume up quite loud. When the trains go by, the coyotes answer the whistle. You'll hear them howl. This is about a 10 yard shot. Over time I've learned that you can tell by the way a rat moves his tail whether you've made a real solid lethal shot or not. And in this case even though the rat's knocked completely upside down I didn't like the way his tail was moving. So I gave him a follow up shot through the body and that did finish him off quite well. One of the issues with the night vision is that there's a certain deep distance between the viewer and the reality of uh, what you're really doing. So I've added a, a few color photographs. It's visually it's quite stunning to I think to move from the monochrome uh, sort of sanitized version of uh, shooting the rats and. Uh, then moving to the color photographs. Dairy has so much equipment around, much of which is used infrequently. And of course, debris is tossed aside and picked up when it's convenient. This is about a 35 yard shot on these two rats. One of the issues with the camcorder and light is, of course, when I'm using maximum telephoto on the camcorder, the, uh, cam the camcorder requires much, much more light. No different than uh, camcorder in daylight. 
I like the contrast and the size of the animals here. Also, the cow is not the least bit concerned about me running around shooting in her home. I'm real intent on shooting, two things happen, one of which is that I'm not paying a lot of attention to holding my camcorder vertically correctly so that uh, things that are straight up and down appear so. Also I wear a head light on my head that is strapped on head, LED light, and sometimes it rattles against the camcorder which makes that annoying rattle you've been hearing, sorry about that try to do better in the future. This rat was sort of tucked in behind some old equipment here that I think is visually quite interesting. I have no idea what all that fractured plastic on the left is. Coils of rope. Mysteries of a dairy. He finally turned around and gave me an opportunity which I couldn't resist. Since it was a body shot, I followed up real quickly with a shot under the chin. He comes bouncing out, and I'm leaning through a pipe fence, and he lands right below me, so I have to swing the gun around with the camcorder to get below a lower pipe so I can get an image of him where he wound up in the muck. And once again, the contrast between the monochrome and the color. And this is how he wound up. You can see the feed pellets laying on the floor there. These two, I have no idea what this was about. It ended in a satisfactory manner for me. Probably not for the rat. That frantic tail flipping that you're seeing there virtually always indicates a fatal shot. Part much more of a nervous reaction. rat was in the calf pen where they feed grain to the, to the calves. Rats love this place. Didn't work out too good for this guy. Rats are interesting animals. I see strong family connections that I think are admirable. I don't have any great hatred or dislike of the rats. They just, the populations are just, it's they're too explosive. So this kind of thing is necessary. It would be nice if we could not have to do this sort of thing, but uh, it's necessary right now. And so this is the result, quickly taken out of the picture.
in the calf pen area, the rats have made a subterranean complex that you can see down into, as I have here, and uh, take shots, and then you can you see, you've seen other, if you watch my other videos, you've seen similar situations where the rats are thrashing about underneath. In these last few sequences, I've moved from the main barn down to the feed bunker about a quarter of a mile away. The bunker is filled with chopped corn and covered with plastic and weighted down with old tires. And there's also a grain storage bin immediately to the left in this picture. a perfect place for rats to live, although they are a bit more vulnerable to predators. I've seen owls hunting them there during the morning and evening hours, eagles, ravens, even coyotes, and the neighbor's cat comes over and has a feast here, especially after I've been around. 